hello guys welcome to my youtube channel so let's begin from this page in front of you so this is an award letter from someone from this youtube channel this scholarship was won i think two years ago at monash university in australia as you can see from the screenshot this scholarship is worth thirty thousand australian dollars in stipend so this person got an annual stipend of thirty thousand and then the scholarship also covered international fees and overseas student health cover and lasted for two years so this is a research master's lasted for two years at monash university in australia so we'll be looking at a similar opportunity today at the same university fully funded both masters and phd coming with stipend coming with insurance coming with um, travel allowance coming with health um, insurance i think i've said that already and full tuition cover so let's begin without any further delay just before we begin in case you're new here you're welcome but where have you been there are lots of videos already on this channel on fully funded scholarships from around the world. So look around. I'm sure you'll find something that catches your interest. And if you're a returning viewer, a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back. Thanks for your constant support. And I hope you get a scholarship sooner later. So let's begin. So this is the page. This is the page of different research scholarships. You can see graduate research scholarships at Monash University. There are a number of them. Some of them are worth over. Let's go back there. Let's go up there. Some of them are worth over thirty-five thousand. So two years ago it was about thirty thousand. Last year, so I think so one or two people from this channel got it last year. It was about thirty-three. So now it's about thirty-five thousand in stipend. And then this is what you get every um, two weeks. From the stipend you also get relocation allowance if you're an international student you get two thousand dollars if you're within um australia you get one thousand and there are different categories of scholarships the application process for almost all of them is the same you can always find that out yourself but we'll be looking at the rotp and probably the monash graduate scholarship but the rest are kind of similar as well um, a number of them are specific to certain departments, but the RLTP and the Monash are open to every other department, every department. But if we scroll down a little, probably the corner of your eye has caught this one worth over 50000 This is the Maxwell King PhD Scholarship. As the name implies, it's just for PhD students. Very generous over 50,000, that's a lot of money. There are also other ones here. The issue with these ones is that they're often department specific. Of course, you can check them on your own and they have also a very smaller intake compared to the, the one we saw earlier, the RLTP or the Monash Graduate Scholarship. Of course, you can always do your research, dig in and see which one applies to your field. You can still scroll down and see other one. There's something on this energy, Zeman Energy Studies Scholarship as well. So there you go. And so we'll be looking at this one, the ROTP and probably the Monash Graduate Scholarship. So this is the ROTP page. The amount is, um, is confirmed here, 35,000, over 35,000. And then you get other perks like stipend, relocation allowance. We saw it there, it's about 2,000, right? I think we can confirm. Yes, 2,000. Australian dollars for relocation allowance then covers your um, tuition fees and the other scholarships can use to cover your tuition fees remember when we checked out the screenshots there were two categories of scholarships so the ROTP covered the stipend the Monash International Tuition Scholarship covers the tuition and health insurance and I think that's what they're trying to stay here trying to say here that there are a number of tuition scholarships available for our international students that can be packaged with this stipend so this one covers stipend but if you get it they bundle you up you know make you happy with all that kinds of funding that would cover tuition as well so you wouldn't have to pay anything through and through so how do you apply for this um to apply there's no separate application process you simply apply for one of the courses at the university and indicate that you intend to be you want to be considered 
for the scholarship. Of course, keep the deadline in mind. The deadline is on the 31st of August. But I would say do not wait till 31st because there are lots of things you have to do before you apply. And I'll be showing them to you step by step. Those things take time. You have to send an email to a professor. You have to get the supervisor on time even before you start applying. For some courses, you might need to even submit a research proposal before you even start applying. So you have to start as soon as you watch this video, if that makes sense. So let's, let me show you the process. So the deadline is 31st of August. That's the deadline we were trying to catch. So we can, um, before we proceed to apply, you can check the Monash Graduate Scholarship. So the one we looked at at first was this one, the ROTP, the Research Training Program Stipend. So this is one of the scholarships. It's on the list, the first on the list. And now we're looking at the Monash Graduate Scholarship. You can see it's also quite similar as well. It's for either the doctorate or master's by research. Quite similar to what we saw earlier. So the application process is also similar. Just you just apply for the scholarship while you're applying for the admission. You consider it automatically while you're applying for admission. So if you get admission, usually you consider it for the scholarship. And remember, this is by research, a PhD or master's by research. There's a difference between a master's, thought master's or coursework master's and a master's by research. If you apply for a coursework master's, you might not get the scholarship. You're on your own. <laughs> so this is for a research. This is a research scholarship. And the deadline for this one as well is on the 31st of August. So let's move. How do you apply? Go to how to apply and then go to research degrees. How to apply research degrees. So scroll down and click on apply now. So do not worry, you're not applying now. It's just to get the information on how to apply. When you click on that button, it takes you here. So application requirements, you can always check that on your own. It's usually um, at least a 2 one for a master's and a good master's for if you're applying for a PhD. But let's look at this one. That could be a headache sometimes, the English proficiency. Do you need to write any English proficiency exam? Let's find out. So English proficiency and then lots of English here. Uh, but then these are the countries exempted from the English language test. And right off the bat, I can see my country here in Nigeria. I can see Ghana and a number of other countries here. And you can make a case. If your country is not on this list, you can make a case to them and show that you do not need an English language test if you've studied all your life in English language. You can make a case to them. Good luck with that. But these people, applicants from these countries, would have their English language test. With, so you wouldn't have to write any of these English language tests. These um, IELTS or TOEFL or the Pearson test or the rest of them. So that's good news. So these are the countries exempted. Let's proceed. So English language is done. What do we go next? So you have to submit what they call an expression of interest form. EOI, expression of interest form. And the requirements differ from departments. So there are different departments, there are different faculties. There's arts and design, business, economics, and the rest of them, science. So let's say we are in education. Somebody wants to work on children with disabilities. So what would you do? We go to education, um, child, children, education and disabilities. And then this is the education application instruction portal. And then the same something about checking eligibility, find a supervisor, expression of interest form, and then submit application. So find a supervisor. Let's use education for the example. So let's find a supervisor here and see if we can find somebody working on children and disability let's say children and then this uh, B and C. so these are the professors working on children disability so you found a professor what do they want you to do next so find a professor and here they said email your proposed supervisor and then send them your full academic transcript, your detailed CV, and this department. So it might be different for that department, but education department wants you to send a research proposal with these headings, research title, brief summary, literature review, um, gap, gap in the literature, or the argument you need, the 
the space in the literature you want to fill and the method you intend to to um, use. And there's a guide here on how to actually write this. So this should be sent to the supervisor. So imagine we found a supervisor, for instance. Let's look at um, Professor Nicole Reinhardt. So let's see. And she works on, oh, she works on autism, um, H, um, A, D, H, D. So that works. And then, so you look at her profile, see her publications, what she's worked on. If that's your area of interest, then you found your professor. So what do you do with this? You've sent this professor an email. But remember that you were told to send these documents as well, CV transcript, your um, 3,000 to 5,000 word research proposal. So having done that, I think you meant to get a yes from a supervisor, so I haven't sent them these things. Of course, you introduce yourself like um, you're from this country, this is what you, this is your background, this is what you studied, this is your work experience, and this is what you intend to do. You, need to, you intend to study a master's, a research master's or a PhD at Monash University, and um, you think your area of interest aligned with this professor and you would, you wish to request for supervision in A, B, C, D area of research. Attached is your CV and um, or the relevant document that you hope to hear from them. So, so something like that. And then when you get a yes, then you can proceed to what they call the expression of interest form. This expression of interest form, you write the name of the professor who you intend to work with, and then other things they ask of you from the expression of interest form will be um, um, every other thing you could add to it. And then you're invited to apply. So I haven't considered your expression of interest form. I haven't considered your form by the department and they think you're appropriate for the department. Then they ask you to apply. You don't just apply yourself. A number of times I tell people, do not rush to apply. Follow the instructions. Show them when it comes to Australia. The last video I made about Australia, somebody was applying already. I was like, how come you're applying already? Have you contacted the supervisor? Have they said yes? Have you gone through all those processes before you apply? You can't just apply like that unless they will probably send you to an agent or something. So please follow instructions. So I haven't submitted your expression of interest form. Then when they think you're suitable, then you're um, invited to apply. This is a copy of the expression of interest form here, by the way. So then you invited to submit application. So remember, this is just for the education um, faculty or department. Other departments might have something similar or different. Let's say science. So faculty of science. And what are they saying? So this is science. Science is saying, check eligibility, good. And then... English requirements is already sorted. And what else? Find a supervisor. They also need you to find a supervisor. But they didn't specify whether you should send your supervisors out to this document. But it's a good thing to often attach your CV and probably your transcript is a good thing often. And then complete an expression of interest form. And you may receive an invitation to apply. They didn't say here whether you should get a confirmation from your supervisor before you submit the expression of interest form. Could clarify that, but probably just wanted to identify somebody and then submit the form. It's often a good thing to get the approval of the supervisor before you submit the form. So let's move on. These are the different departments. You have biology, you have chemistry, and the rest of them. So check what the different departments are asking for, depending, of course, on the one you're interested in and your area of interest or your background. So this is biology, I think. This is particularly what they need. So check their um, research interest. Find the supervisor. Email your academic transcript and CV to the supervisor. So you see here, biology is asking you to email your transcript and CV. They're not asking for a research proposal. That's why I think um, department variations are, are important. Once the supervisor has accepted you, they would email you an invitation to you. That's great. That's wonderful. You can then apply online for admission and a scholarship, blah, 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 blah. You see, so biology is very straightforward. But then you still need a supervisor. So check for your own department. Check and see 
what they need. I remember you need to submit before the 31st of August. And that is why you have to start on time. Start making all the, what do they call it? Contacts on time, putting your documents together on time. Making sure that you're able to contact a supervisor, get a good feedback from them, and then apply. In case you contact a supervisor, you don't get a response. Wait for two weeks, then send a reminder. Wait for another week, you don't get a response. I think it's time to like move on to another person. Yeah, that's often like the unspoken rule. So that's it, guys. I hope this was useful. Fully funded scholarships at Monash University in Australia with um, stipend, with um, travel allowance, with tuition cover, they could even get health insurance as well. So they've got you through and through. So as I said, someone got this scholarship two years ago and even last year. I think a number of people have actually won the Monash scholarship on this channel. So it's not impossible. People do it and you can also do it if you put work into it and dedication. So just sit down, pay attention to the instructions and put your best foot forward. And that's it, guys. I hope this was useful. As usual, we cannot wait to celebrate you. Keep an eye on this channel. Many more things are coming your way. The application window is opening very soon. By the application window, I mean the application timetable for mostly UK, US, European universities, usually around that um, July, August, September, you know. Understand what I mean? The OGs in the house know what I mean. Lots of universities will be opening the application windows and lots of scholarships as well. So stick to me because I'll be bringing you more of these kinds of juicy opportunities where you get fully funded scholarships, you might even get um, visa um, grants there, you might even get um, things covering insurance and the rest of them. So it comes as a very big package. So do not do not miss out if you've not subscribed already. And as usual, I'll see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now and do not forget to subscribe. Cheers.